Hello, hello. Hoshin Denka, friends, boo you. Uh, it is Wednesday night, <laughs> and I'm still getting used to Facebook Live. If anyone's um, already joined the chat, jump on in in the comments and, um, and let me know. Uh, this is our usual Wednesday night class, 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock. We'll be doing uh, the meditation and the qigong, the breath work that we've been going through. So the plan is that the, over the next however long, the Wednesday night videos will be breath work videos, energy work, meditation videos. And the Friday night videos are where I'm going to be doing the, the Hoshin philosophy and the theory talks. Just presenting the base and the principles. Hopefully you guys are going well. How are you? Those at home who I can see. Sorry, I'm clicking my way through my iPad. Welcome if you've just joined. I hope that you've been having a good week <laughs> since I saw some of you on Friday. And remember that this Friday night, same time, same bat channel, same bat place, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m., I'll be doing the next Friday night live stream. So there's a whole series of topics. And last Friday was just about introducing and kind of setting the motion for the, the plan for the time. And starting this Friday is when I'm just going to get into topic by topic and we'll get into the presentation. So before we get started, hopefully you're in a nice spot. I finally wrote, look, the name up on <laughs> the wall. That was well plan there. I could do this as a full-time career. Uh, plus the awesome PowerPoint that I prepared earlier. That's, uh, that's really what the cost of this is about. Uh, the Kamidana is magically over there in front of a whole bunch of stuff, unfortunately. So in the short term, we have this beautiful wall and a whole bunch of the writing from three weeks ago that I still haven't rubbed off. And my goal will be at least... Thank you. At least to have rubbed off the chalk by Friday. But you know me. Okay, hopefully you're somewhere sitting down or you're chilling out. It doesn't really matter. You can do this standing up. You can do this from sitting. You can do this maybe driving a car. Probably isn't really the best uh, scenario. Pull over on the road for an hour. You can listen to this as a podcast down the track and just follow along the processes. It's all good. Whatever position you're in, you don't need anything fancy. Everyone that says that you need a special Zen mat from Lululemon is just a liar or a salesman. Speaking of which, I have a new Rainsbrook Dojo uh, meditation mat on offer. <laughs> Half price. So, I'm going to start off breath work, meditation work. I've got to actually ask a little question and pose the question to us. What do we mean by meditation? What is meditation? It's a word that gets thrown around a lot. Students of mine, anyone in class, obviously you'll have heard me say this a thousand times over, that this modern concept of Zen it just comes from this, this Chinese concept, Chen, uh, a slang term of Chana, which is a Chinese pronunciation and interpretation of a, a more ancient Indian term, Tiana, which just means meditative state, yeah? the place of meditation, the state of meditation. It doesn't demand that you are in a particular outfit, although this does help. <clears throat> it doesn't demand that you're on a... On a cushion made of gold in a temple. You know, it's ridiculous. So wherever you are is the correct place to start. Well done. Ten points already. Tick that off the in list. And all you have to do is observe. So the meditative state is nothing but observation. And what are you observing? You could observe the world outside of you. That is the world of physical sensations that are beyond the internal body. So things that you can find occurring in the world outside, such as the sound of a car. I can hear the whisper of birds very late in the evening. Usually there's music playing in the dojo. No music tonight, sorry. If I was observing physical sensations, I could look for the sensation of the weight of my body. Maybe in my legs, I'm sitting in Caesar on the ground, chatting to you at the moment. I can feel the weight of my body pressing into the ground. As I breathe, I can feel my lungs feel, I can feel the muscles and the, my ribs expanding and I feel the muscle tension, the weight of the body, the weight of my head. These are all just observable sensations. What can you smell? What can you taste? And with soft eyes, what do you see? 
obviously looking at me, but if you just take a moment, turn away from the iPad or just look somewhere in the distance, maybe out a window or into the blankness on a wall or even into the video, but with less seeing, more just casually. What is it that you see? Do you see items or can you just soften your gaze in such a way that there's, a, there's just events, there's just happenings, occurrences. I'm looking beyond the iPad, the back wall of the dojo. I can just see colors mixed with black as a backing and they're just soft it's lovely there's some light it's not really a detail that i'm after just an observation of sensation i can understand that there are sensations occurring weight breath smells tastes visions sights congratulations you've just achieved half of zen meditation so the observation of the external world is one opportunity, it's one aspect. The observation of the internal world, this gets later on at a higher level. There's no distinction between the two. It's useful in language just to divide them for now. At an internal level, breathing, if you really settle in your mind, what we're going to do tonight, some um, sensation observation in the skin, you'll find texture, blood, pulsing, heartbeat. You'll observe heartbeat at different areas of the body, maybe veins on the side of the head, maybe a, something to your breath, a nervousness or a raciness or a rhythm. Perhaps sensations in the body such as pain or aches, maybe a, a stabbing pain or an old injury throbbing sensations, joints. These are all just possible experiences in the internal environment. And there is no distinction between internal and external other than for the purpose of these activities in terms of where you apply your gaze. So if I say, look up, it's an easy way of communicating. If I say, look down, we all know what I'm talking about. Obviously, philosophically, they don't really exist, do they? There isn't an up or a down, it's just from relative perspective. So bear with me in the, the use of the language, yeah? So we get started. Wherever you are is good. You can close your eyes if you like, or you can keep them open, it's all good for you, I don't really mind. You're gonna start by breathing. I'll do the first part of this seated, and then I'll stand up. You do whatever you want. So I'm just breathing in through the nose, down into the belly. Out through the mouth. And as I allow myself to just breathe in deeply, my lungs fill with breath. My ribs expand, my body shape changes. And the outward breath is natural, exhaustive. In and out, in through the nose. Out through the mouth, tongue sits on the roof of the mouth, just on the top palate behind the front teeth. I explain why later in the philosophy talks on the Friday nights. But for now, you're just breathing. And as you begin to develop a rhythm of breath, the most obvious internal sensation might be your heartbeat. You just softly bring your mind to the beating of your heart. As you breathe in and out. next sensation depending on where you are that might come to the forefront is the weight of your body against the ground the chair the seat the standing position wherever you are there will be a sensation of where your body meets the force the pulling force of the ground just take your attention there no need to detail it, just observe that sensation. 
Just note, ah, sensation. As you breathe in and out. Now take your attention to the sounds that you can hear around you. Things that are close by. As you breathe. And as you step back in your mind's eye and soften that perspective of observation, you should be able to breathe and observe the weight of the body and observe some sounds nearby all together in a homogenous paste as you just breathe not looking at any one of them just hearing them observing them knowing them in through the nose down into the belly and out through the mouth Now taking your hearing further afield, listening far away as you breathe in and out. What can you hear that is the furthest away from you? The neighbours? Cars? The kettle in the neighbour's house? Dog barking. Clock. Listen as you breathe in through the nose, down into the belly. And out through the mouth. And opening your eyes, we'll move on to the next part. All right, I'm gonna stand up. You're welcome to do whatever you like. You can stand, you can sit. There's no particular requirement. <coughs> Hopefully you can still hear me. Thumbs up if you can still hear me. <laughs> okay, unless you've gone to sleep, in which case I'll just take it as a good sign. So you're gonna start off with a simple breath exercise before we get into the sense, sensation observation. So I'm going to stand, you can do this from sitting, you just need your hands. I'm going to join thumb and first finger together. And breathing in, lifting my hand up, letting go, breathing out, pushing the palm down to the ground. Next finger together. Breathing out, pushing the palm down with the breath. Third finger. Breathing out. Fourth finger. Breathing out. And the other hand, first finger. Breathing out. Second finger. Breathing out. Third finger. Breathing out. Fourth finger. Breathing out, all the fingers, breathing out, other hand, 
all the fingers. Do it now. I'm gonna do it again. Right hand. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Left hand. Both hands together. All right. If you're standing, softening your stance. So soften the legs. The legs aren't locked down. If you're sitting, just relaxing your seated position. Bring your head on top of your chin, on top of your shoulders, on top of your hips. So you're upright, skeleton. We're going to move into some sense observation. So we're going to start with your left pinky. Hold up your left pinky in front of the screen. And I don't know if you're doing it, I just have to go on the mic. Okay, left pinky, you can put it down by your side. Those of you who are in my classes over the last few weeks, the Friday, a couple of weeks ago, the final physical class that we had, this exact activity is what we spent a lot of that time doing. This will be more succinct though. So I'm going to start off by taking my thinking observation, my observable thought, to my left pinky. I'm just going to be imagining my pinky. Imagine it, pardon me, imagining the edges of the skin of the pinky finger on my left hand, the nail, the fingernail, the bed of the nail, the left pinky pad tip of the left pinky finger on my left hand. And as I breathe in through my nose, down into my belly, out through my mouth, I'm going to watch in my mind my observation of this left pinky. And I'm going to observe slowly an increasing of the observable sensations. Perhaps tingling, heat, twitching, blood pulsing, a pulse, could even be numbness, numbness, observable numbness, it's a sensation, sounds strange. Breathing in through my nose, down through my belly. Watching my observable mind on my left pinky finger. If you'd like more advanced work on the left pinky finger, isolate the sensation of the nail bed. separate from the sensation of the rest of the finger. Then isolate the sensation of the pad of the finger, the inside pad. And then isolate the sensation of the tip of the finger. And any high grade students, black belt students, 
as you breathe and you watch, observe the sensation of the bone inside his finger, distinct from the flesh. And the joints. Until the entirety of the finger, the left pinky finger, is observable, varying sensations under your mind's gaze. And now move on to your left ring finger, the next finger on your left hand. Starting at the tip of the finger, breathing through your nose, down into the belly, out through your mouth. Continue to observe some specific points. The tip of the finger is a very useful one to start with. You're wanting to catch the glimpse of nervous system sensation in the left ring finger. As you breathe, not being able to get feedback from you at home about how you're going with this activity, I'm tripling the time that it takes me to observe the sensation and then moving on to the next. So if you're getting this, if you're able to have these physical sensations occur to you within the time that I'm giving, great. If not, don't worry, it just needs more practice. If you've never done this before, don't expect it to suddenly come to you like that. You might have to sit and look at your pinky finger for an hour. As you're breathing, and I'm focusing on my left ring finger, keeping my mind's gaze fixed. Some higher grade students will find your observation on the left pinky, the left ring finger, to the nail bed. distinct from the pad. Distinct from the tip. Distinct from the bone. And the joint. on to the third finger on the left hand, the middle finger, left root finger. And this becomes harder. You now need to apply your observation of sensation isolated from the two fingers that we've just observed. They might be buzzing in your observation. You might feel an increase of warmth and blood flow to the area, sensation of heat. You have to just put that aside and focus your attention on the left middle finger. Starting wherever in the finger is useful for you. I start at the tip or the pad. I find that the easiest place to start. Breathing in and out and through the nose, down into the belly. Let the breath reassign the shape of your body. Don't correct it to what you think is a more spiritually way of standing or spiritual form of sitting. Just let your body Relax around your breath. Put your head on top of your shoulders, on top of your hips. And your skeleton will take the mass of your weight, the mass of your musculature and tissue. Taking your thoughts, your thinking observation to your left middle finger. Breathing in and out and observing sensation. Once you start to observe sensation somewhere on the left middle finger, expand that, move up the finger or move outwards from that area. 
and your goal is a complete observation of the whole left middle finger. A nervous system sensation on the left middle finger. For more advanced study, focus on the nail bed. Tip of the finger. The pad of the finger. The bone. The joints. All the way up the finger until you have a fairly mapped out image in your mind of the left middle finger. Breathing in and out, move on to your left pointer finger. Breathing in through your nose, down into your belly. Doesn't matter if you're seated or if you're running, listening to this, headphones, if you're standing. These meditations, these qigong are about applying effort, focused mental effort under mental observation to experience a heightened sense of body sensation through the nervous system. Increased circulation, Fun experiment of actually feeling each individual finger and each part of each individual finger as unique and distinct from each other. Breathing in and out, and we're working on the left pointer finger. Observing sensation from the fingertip or the pad. Continuing with your mind's gaze there as you imagine the finger, you're mapping it out in your mind until you begin to observe some forms of sensation in the left pointer finger. Whatever it is, a pulsing, a tingling, a sensation of heat or cold, even a sensation of numbness, pressure, Pulsing, blood flow, tingling, spikiness, all kinds of different interpretations of nervous system sensation. But by now, with your breathing and your continual observation of your left pointer finger, you should be able to feel some distinct character traits about the finger, some sense of sensation. It wasn't there until you applied your mind to it. It's there in the background, but we're not walking around always aware of that. More advanced students, the study take your mind's observation to the sensation of the nail bed as distinct from the rest of the flesh. And then observe the sensations of the pad, distinct from the rest. And the sensations on the tip Moving upwards, the finger through the bone. Sensations of the bone as distinct to the tissue. A throbbing density. The joints. As you breathe in through your nose, down into your belly. Letting the breath fill your kidneys. Feel the lower part of your lungs and stretch through your back and your ribs. Out through your mouth. Moving on to your left thumb. Taking your mind's gaze into your left thumb. Doesn't matter where you start. 
I find it easier to start on the pad or the tip of the left thumb. You might not. But I'm breathing. Higher grade students, tongue sits on the roof of the mouth behind the two front top teeth. Talk about why in philosophy classes. And as I breathe in and out, I'm keeping my mind's focus on my left thumb. The thumbs are usually the most difficult. Breathing and observing, continue your gaze until some semblance of sensation observation begins to become apparent to you. Even if it's just a vague tingling in the left thumb. And then grab onto that in your mind and start there, hone in slowly in your observation. Perhaps the tingling can be isolated around a joint or the tip of the thumb or the pad or the nail bed of the thumb. As you're breathing in and out, be able to observe sensation distinct in each section of the thumb, the nail bed, the pad, the tip, the bone distinct from the flesh, the joints. And as you breathe, your attention comes to the back of the hand, behind the knuckles. Same activity as you're breathing in, bringing your observation to nervous sensation, nervous system sensation, physical sensations on the back of the left hand. Any number of sensations, heat, tingling, pulse, numbness and one by one each of the knuckles fall under your observation and join your ability to gain sens a sensation of the left hand so I'm moving from the knuckle of my pinky to the knuckle of my ring finger, up to the knuckle of my middle finger, up to the knuckle of my pointer finger, I'm breathing, I'm moving your attention to the inside palm of the left hand. All of the tissue on the inside, the palm up through the inside where it starts going to the fingers. Same activity, breathing through your nose, down into your belly, out through your mouth. Observing sensation in the left palm.
your breath in through your nose, down into your belly, out through your mouth. Moving your observer, your mental observation upwards towards your left wrist. And as you breathe, just placing your mind observation skills at the left wrist. Not really looking for something, you're not hunting like a dog, you're just sitting there, interested in what kind of sensations are already happening that you might not be aware of. What kind of body functions are occurring right now in your wrist that you could potentially be more aware of? Is there a pulse there that you can find in your mental observation? Is there a sense of warmth, heat? Is there a tingling or a prickly sensation or a sensation of any kind around the left wrist? And as you breathe in and out, like a pencil, with your mind's eye, I want you to draw a line of observation from the wrist up to the elbow, the left elbow. And as you walk along that pencil line in your mind, observe sensation of the tissue and the bone as you go up the wrist towards the left elbow. There might be pockets, little moments of sensation. You might not be able to observe the entire left forearm, don't worry. There might be areas of skin that have heightened sensation to you, or the bone, or a throbbing, or your pulse, or something. As you breathe, drawing your mind, your attention up your left arm, from the left wrist up to the left elbow, and then settling in your mental imagining of the left elbow, As you breathe into your nose, down into your belly, out through your mouth, head sits on top of your shoulders, on top of your hips, your skeleton takes the weight of your tissue, your musculature, your mass. Take a few breaths to just let the observations at your elbow come into the forefront. Don't look for something specific though. You might miss what's already going on. Just casually observe the area in your mind. Undistracted by the things around you. As if you were reading a very complicated sentence of a book. You're just observing, looking at the left elbow. And slowly under your guise, under your gaze, tangible sensations of the physical body begin to arise. Odd sensations. If you're new to this, they might be as vague as generally numb. If you're very good at this, they might be able to be distinct to such a point where you can identify the bone from the tissue, from the sinew, from the tendon, from the hair on the skin, and the temperature of the air around the skin, and so on and so on. Your nose down into your belly. Like a 
pencil, drawing your attention from your left elbow upwards through your left arm up to your left shoulder. Just feeling and observing, noting sensation as you go up the left upper arm, upwards and into the left shoulder. I said before, not having feedback from you at home with how you're going, and with lots of different people with different depths of skill in this activity, watching, I just have to set a standard, so I will move it, it will, I'll wait for three times the amount of time it takes me to observe sensation in those areas, and then I will move on, to give you a chance to breathe, Take your mind's observation to that point and be ready, at least vaguely, even if it's just a vague sensation. discount the sensation of muscle tension and pain. Just isolate them, look at them. And now as you breathe in through your nose, down into your belly. I want you to very quickly just observe the whole left arm from the fingertips, one, two, three, four, five, up the bones of the fingers, through the hands, the palms, up the wrist, up through the forearm and the wrist to the elbow, up from the elbow, up the upper arm to the shoulder. So the whole left arm becomes distinctly observable from the rest of the body. As you breathe in and out, and you relax. We'll take a little break, you'll open your eyes. I'll come back to dinner. So if you were just doing that activity with us, I think for the last 30 minutes or so, just put your thumbs up or make a little note on the, um, on the chat on the live video so I can see if you actually were able to do that. If you found sensation, do a little thumbs up and make a note. Remember that if you've just started this for the first time or it's been a very long time since you've done this activity, it's like treading a new path through an overgrown field. It's not going to happen the first time. You're going to be walking that shortcut multiple times over, you know, day after day after day, week after week, before you've really worn out a groove through the path that is familiar and easy. And these sensation activities, that is a great example of an application of jhana, of the observation, the meditative observation, to sit and watch, yeah, the vipassana. So classic Mahayana Buddhism 101, it's all based on one idea, to sit and watch, the vipassana, the, obs the, the posture of watching, the posture of seeing, observing. And we were just observing sensation. You can do the same activity observing the sound of a fountain. Welcome to Japanese Zen. You can do the same activity observing the breath. Or you'll find most Buddhist meditation will start you there, the breath at the end of the nose. And over days, you'll observe the sensation increase. Not just breathing at the end of the nose, the nose in general, the sensation of the flesh, of the nostrils, the hair, the inside of the nostrils. The temperature of the air as it changes through the layers of the, the, the depth of the nostrils and the nose. Seven days of sitting for 10 hours and breathing and only looking in your mind at the end of your nose, you can refine the detail of that to an astonishing level. And it's not unimaginable then how 
in the past, people were able to make observations about the world through their meditations, through applying thought. It's not rocket science, yeah? The brain divides and contrasts. So if you start with a sensation of pain in the shoulder, as an example, and you sit and you look at it honestly with your mind and your intention, give it 10 minutes observing the pain, and you will find that the pain will isolate into two things. It will go from one large mass to two smaller things. And you might call them, this is just hypothetically, you might call those things dull ache and tingling. And that'll be curious. And you'll be like, huh, well, the pain has gone away. Now I'm left with this sensation of dull ache, which is still maybe a sensation of uh, moving away from. And the sensation of, of kind of um, tingliness. And you'll start there and you'll go, you'll decide which one you want to put your attention on next. And so you might go from massive pain, you watch it for a bit, it divides under your gaze into these subcategories of distinction. And then you'll decide to observe further the dull ache. And what you might find is that the dull ache will further divide after 10 or 15 minutes into two distinct subgroups. And you might call one numb and the other one you might call sharp. And it's just really interesting that slowly what we originally considered through our long mental perspective as pain could be divided into layer and layer and layer and layer and layer. And the whole world can be done in this way. I'm sure that all of you have had that activity, that opportunity to take a moment and listen. And all of a sudden you realize there's actually a lot of information going on. There's a lot of cars, the weight of your body in its relationship to the ground, either through seating, your seat, your standing, your feet, Caesar, I'm here. In Caesar, I can feel the relationship of the force between the ground and my body mass, all meeting at my legs, my shins, my ankles, less so, my toes, the tops of my feet. And if I watch that for 10 minutes, that will divide into more specific areas. And these energy work activities, so-called, which scare people off, these breath work, yeah, these forms of Qigong are as simple. Meditation is as simple as observing the sensations that are already present. It is only imagination that can observe sensations of the future or the past. The only thing to observe if you want to observe present sensation, are the things that are occurring right now, inside, outside, the inside world, to coin, to use a better phrase, the heartbeat, the rhythm. You can develop this to the point where you can scan through the body in your mind and just touch on each individual component of the limb. If we take a moment, those of you who were just doing the activity for the last half hour with the left hand, the sensation on the fingers in the left hand, if you take a moment, you look at your hand, start with your left pinky, and just note if it should be very easy for you to rediscover in your mind and your sensation of nervous sensation, nervous system sensation, or I should say your observation of nervous system sensation, it should be easy to rediscover tingling or sensation in the left pinky. And it should be quite quick, and you should be able to move on to the left ring finger and you can maybe isolate sensations of the nail bed, distinct from the pad or the fingertip, the bone distinct from the tissue and the joints. And moving on to the middle finger, left root finger. Again, this should be easier. This should be much quicker. This should take five or 10 seconds compared to the couple of minutes we gave each finger just earlier tonight. Moving on to your left pointer finger. Moving on to your left thumb. Breathing and looking at the palm. You should be able to observe sensation tingling, heat, whatever it is. Don't, 
Don't decide on what you think is the correct observation of sensation or the correct sensation to be feeling. You're just observing sensation. It's already there. Your nervous system knows it. Otherwise, your hand would fall off. There's already blood moving there. There's already sensation and, and occurrences. There's already a life force. The functions that maintain the physical flesh are all happening. And the back of the hand. And the wrist. Now, take the hand slightly further away from you and looking at the whole hand, gain a sense of sensation in general of the left hand. Maybe the fingertips all tingling or all the fingers in one kind of wash of observation of your mind. Or perhaps all of the hand just vibrating softly under your mind's observation. And I mentioned this to my students a few weeks ago. When you sit down and you take the time to actually do these, we've only done this for 45 minutes or so. You do this for a year. <laughs> Go and do a two week silent meditation and do nothing but look at your nose or look at your left pinky finger. And then you really start to discover sensations that were always there, but just not available to you in your day to day life. Then you take these experiences and you reference them back against spiritual texts of the past from all different cultures. And it becomes very easy to understand why gods are drawn with their hands on fire or their whole body is drawn in a flame or their fingers are drawn in particular points and directions with, with blue light or flames or the, the great uh, the old Catholic saints are all drawn with glowing halos around the body. These are the kinds of sensations that you end up experiencing, and it makes sense, I think, if you were imparting those through written form or, or pictograph, that you could potentially envelop the body in a hazy light or a ball or a flame. That, that really is the sensation sometimes that I experience when I take that activity across the whole body, and I can feel parts of my body my skin tingling and there's a bigness to me just like if I look at my whole left hand individually and then I observe back the perspective the whole hand really I could draw a, a ball around that and maybe it would be an attempt to metaphorically suggest that there's a sensation of of bigness there's a sensation of something going on there yeah so it doesn't take a stretch of the imagination to draw parallels between the symbology and the iconographic study of the past. I think our work is to really find where they all marry up and the beauty of something like Budo. This is Hoshin, Hoshin Den, it all draws from the same pool of knowledge. Bujinkan, Bujitsu, it's rich. All of the secrets are hidden in plain view. You just have to be willing enough and bothered enough to sit down and look for them. So this is wrapping up at nine o'clock. We've got just two or three more minutes. My suggestion is if you've got another 15 minutes after the video ends, take the same activity we did on the left hand and move it to the right hand. Set yourself somewhere where you're comfortable or not for the high grade students. Try doing this under some uncomfortability, that's hard. Start on your right pinky finger, observe sensation, draw the sensation or rather Continue to observe until the sensation increases and it seems to expand through the, the entirety of the finger and then move on to the next finger and the next and so on and so on and then the inside palm and then the back of the palm and then the wrist and then drawing up through the forearm to the elbow and then drawing up the elbow up to the shoulder. When you get there, both at the same time, move through the vague observation of the left hand and the vague observation of the right hand and then ex Keep, keep creating layers of abstraction, yeah? Move yourself further and further back so that what was a finger is now fingers. What were fingers are now left hand. What was left hand are now hands. What were hands are now arms. Arms are just limbs. They connect, do the same thing with the toes, both feet, left and right, up, 
through the body until you can distinctly kind of abstractly observe sensation very quickly, very generally, through the limbs, distinct from the body. And then you're ready to move on to a more advanced study of this, where you take that observation inside the body, the body processes, the breathing, the breath, yeah? the stretching of, of muscle through the torso, the gurgling of, of the sensation of gurgling and, and peristalsis yeah? in, the, in the lower intestine, the heartbeat, fascinating, really exciting stuff. I encourage you to take a scientific approach to this. It's just the science of mental observation. It's really just an experiment to find out how far can you take your human brain observation, your thinking mind observation, like a microscope into the detailed processes of your environment, including the physical form? And what kind of information does it provide? From everything that I have read and studied and understood in my interest in Shakyamuni Buddha's work, in the fundamentals of Mahayana Buddhism, really, it seems to me like that was actually the question, whether it was posed in that way, but that was the question that started that entire journey. And I don't think that the question was ever answered. I think that the, the, what I mean was, I think the question was answered constantly. I don't think there was ever uh, an end to that, that point. I think the same thing is true. The NIMPA, the ninja study, they have vast background in what is today known as Kundalini Yoga. Lots of forms of breathing and breath work from China. A whole bunch of, of Mahayana uh, breath work activities that have merged and changed and mixed with Taoism and ended up as, as um, Mikyo and uh, Japanese Buddhism finds its way into samurai arts and so on and so on. These are skills can be, I imagine they could be useful. The ability to breathe, think about your feet and feel your heartbeat slow. I can imagine that under times of stress where you don't want to be caught out or you need to be able to make logical decisions, that's probably a really good skill. And if you can find a way of observing this, regardless of your, of your sense of spiritual ethos or your concepts of theosophy or religious views, ignore all of that and just take it as meditation is nothing more than the observation of sensation using the vehicle of the human mind. Treat it as an, a scientific endeavour and then you won't get caught up in the, uh, the chit-chatter and the distractions along the way. So good luck. Hopefully that was enjoyable. Every Wednesday night, we'll slowly be working on this. All of these are designed to build on each other. So um, people can go back. This will be on the page. You're welcome to, to just view it again. Those who weren't able to join us tonight can just view it tomorrow or whatever. Um, next week, I'll be building on that. So we'll be moving on. Next week, I'll focus on the feet, but we'll do the same activity. Hope you have a good night. If you have any uh, comments, add them in. I'll stay on after the video ends and I'll do some chit-chat posting. And I hope that you're all well. Lots of love. I'll see you on Friday, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. in this group, same bat channel, same bat time, for session number two of my Friday night Hoshinden philosophy and theory class. Ciao, ciao.